Before we get started, let's go over some basics and tips. Battle items. These are easily accessible from battle item chests. Whirlwind grenades for stagger checks. Destruction bombs for weak points. HP potions since healing over time potions are disabled in raids. Time stop potions for cheesing certain raid mechanics. And flares for taking the guesswork out of guardian raids. Review and memorize your skills that have stagger, weak point level, and counter in the description. Craft your own fusion materials to save gold in tier 3. Pick up an excavating tool with super armor. Head to secret forest. Gather relics. Go to stronghold. Research the craft, craft fusion mats in the special tab of the workshop. Buy class engraving books for a huge damage boost early on the market. You'll need 20 green, blue, and purple books. Double slot them in your engraving slots for a level 3 class engraving. Here's our major milestones for early tier 3. Let's hop right in and break it down. First step is to run a chaos dungeon. We need at least a full set of blues to get 1302. For accessories, focus on only spec, swift, and crit. Our first guardian raid is Armored Narasena. After staggering the boss, destroy his tail using weak point to make the fight easier. When the adds pop up, get rid of them ASAP. Narasena has a stagger check. Deplete the bar with stagger skills to avoid high AoE damage. Hone to your next milestone, 1325, which is plus 6. To skip the long honing animation, click Special Honing, then Gear Honing. At 1325, we'll run Chaos Dungeons for a set of purple gear. Don't forget to use Gear Transfer at the honing NPC to save your current progress. Let's go over Inventory Management. Open Auto Dismantle. Check every gear type. Relic, Tier 3, Skill Tree Notification Exclude. Exclude gear with engraving favorites, click Go. Eve's Gems, Auto Fuse, Tier 3, Level 3, Fly. Roster, Engraving Effect. In both tabs, check off your favorite engravings. In the Skills menu, Open Settings, check off each active tripod. We have a new game system to cover, Skill Tree Transfer. Run Chaos Dungeons to get amulets. Amulets have tripod levels. Go to the Skill Tree Transfer NPC. Upgrade your tripods. The higher the level, the lower the probability. In the Skills menu, toggle your upgraded tripods. And that's it. At 1325, we can now do Abyssal Dungeons. Ira's Oculus. The first boss is Cicera. Every stagger, Cicera gains a damage increase buff. Step in a purple puddle to reduce your stagger at the cost of increased damage received. After this plus-shaped attack pattern, don't stand in front of Cicera. Watch out for this animation, it has the potential to one-shot. Our next boss is Sato. Besides a random typing pattern, there's not much to say about this boss. It's similar to the story version, and most of attacks are cones or circles. Just keep on your toes because he's fast. When the stage changes, is back to the forest, stay still until his large AoE finishes. Orea Preveza. The first boss is Maguro. The boss can spawn totems on the stage that increase his damage or defense. Careful, destroying a totem will imprison you. Use control and left click to ping yourself to alert your teammates. When the boss dashes backwards, Maguro will create a safe area around him. If you see this animation, stop attacking. If you see this animation, pop a time stop potion to avoid big damage. The second boss is Albion. Albion will have one of two elements, earth and lightning. This will determine certain attack patterns he performs. At a certain point, he will enrage. Stagger the boss if you'd like to switch the element. There are two special patterns for each element. Lightning will spawn a safe zone in the middle. Dodge the orbs to get to the middle. If anyone alive doesn't make it, it's a white. Earth has a Simon Says pattern. Watch the telegraphs to determine where it is safe. Here's the last special mechanic. Circles will spawn around Albion with stars above them. Step on the circle with the star that matches the amount of points on Albion's back. This will repeat three times, each time being a different star. Next step is honing to 1340 or plus 9. At this point, we'll have access to the South Burn story. This is beneficial to complete for three reasons. Tons of combat level and roster level experience points. Free card packs, and it's a requirement for higher level chaos dungeons. Our next stop is 1370 or plus 15. Here's the average cost of honing materials to get to this point. At 1370, we switch to honing with Great Honor Leapstones and basic array of fusion materials. Exchange your remaining Honor Leapstones at this NPC in Punica. The next goal is to get a set of Legendary Chosen, Preordained, or Harsh Oath equipment. This equipment's base level is 1340. Don't forget to use Gear Transfer again to retain the same eye level. Orea Well Hard Mode. Both Ira's Oculus and Orea Preveza are very similar to the normal mode. The key differences being the mechanics happen sooner and the bosses are stronger. Completing these will now reward a token item called Empyrean Dawn. Open the additional chest at the end of each Abyssal Dungeon to get more. Abyss Raid Argos. In Phase 1, each person is assigned Yellow, Sun, or Purple, Moon. This means throughout the fight, use the color you've been assigned as a safe zone. When Argos lands in the middle, step in a circle that is your color and the direction of your player number times 3. A timer under Argos will start. Each player will have stacks of sun or moon. Attacking the boss will transfer these stacks over to Argos. An imbalance of stacks on the boss will wipe the opposite party when the timer runs out. At this point, yellows and purples will switch. The small pizza mechanic is a Simon Says pattern. The combinations are 3 right, 2 left, and 1 right, 
four left. These can also be in reverse. If you're not confident, stay on the last tile as it does the most damage, or bring a time stop potion to avoid it entirely. In phase two, each party will be assigned yellow or purple. Argos mostly has the same normals as before. The yellow party will be teleported to a stage to fight a mini boss. When the mini boss is staggered, use destruction bombs to destroy his weak point. Failure will cause the mini boss to enrage. Watch out for the random green zones too. After the mini boss is dead, the purple party will be teleported to another mini boss. This mini boss will end up spawning another mini boss twice. This mini boss takes greatly increased damage if staggered. After that, defeat Argos with no other mechanic. In phase three, no party will be assigned a color. This gate has a special seed and weather mechanics with their own wipe conditions. In daylight, a green seed will remove your movement speed debuff. A red seed will create an AoE explosion. The wipe mechanic is when Argos goes to the middle. Run to the yellow seed on the map. After a while, the seed will disappear. In rain weather, blue seeds create a barrier green seeds trap you and nearby players. Pop a blue seed barrier to avoid the white mechanic for this weather. For night weather, red seeds cleanse the vision debuff. Blue seeds create a persistent poison area. For the white mechanic, clear every purple seed from the area which is seen on the map. Claim every chest to get as many Argos blood as possible. Argos and Arrayahard both drop accessories with class engravings. For an easy 3x3 setup, get 5 accessories with plus 3 of the class engraving. Find an ability stone with 2 beneficial engravings. Facet each engraving to at least plus 6, then use books to get the remaining nine nodes. Now it's time to trade in our Empyrean Dawn and Argos Blood. Speak to the Craft Abyss equipment NPC in Punica. Chosen Gear is purchased with Empyrean Dawn. Preordained or Harsh Oath is purchased with Argos Blood. In short, Preordained is for DPS, Harsh Oath is for support. The ultimate goal is a full 5-piece set of Preordained for DPS. This gives 25% crit rate at 5 stacks for 15 seconds, and an added bonus of 50% increased crit damage if you're near someone wearing a full set of Harsh Oath. Here's the average cost of getting from 1370 to 1415. Here's an example of a daily and weekly routine. Run Chaos Dungeons daily for honing mats and boss rush tickets. Do excavating once every two days and craft fusion materials. Set two Bifrost and Phaeton to easily complete your daily Unas for Leapstone. Complete Guardian Raids with Rested Bonus for honing materials when you have time. Use Boss Rush weekly Unas for extra Leapstones, Gems, and Uno tokens for gold. Do Challenge Abyssal weekly for Fearless Knight card packs to get your Lost Wind Cliff card set. Challenge Guardian Raids will give 45 Leapstones weekly and Powder of Sage for tripod enhancing. Orea's Well Weekly for Gold Income. Keep in mind, the Gold Income stops at 1415. Argos Weekly for Gold Income. Don't forget to get your full set of Preordained or Harsh Oath. For Gems, your goal will be reaching all level 7. At 1415, you should try to get 4 times 3 and 5 times 3 when you can. For Tripods, aim for at least all level 4. Alright, I think I covered everything in a nutshell and give you a summary of Tier 3 progression. Good luck and have fun.